Hello, today I'm going to be talking about claims, reasons, and evidence. So we make claims all the time. It might be football is the best sport. It might be golf isn't a real sport. It might be cats are better than dogs. It might be real men wear pink. Any of those are claims, just ordinary daily life claims. Tacos are the best food. Pizza is disgusting. Claims. Now, in a lot of day-to-day -day claims, we don't necessarily go around spouting off evidence. Just in general, if someone asks you, why is pink your favorite color? You might say, just because. Now, if you're talking about pink being your favorite color, the reasons and evidence don't matter a ton. I mean, no one's really affected that much whether or not you like pink. However, when you are making an argument, reasons and evidence very much matter because it's a way of explaining your point of view and that helps other people either accept your point of view and you know follow the solutions you're proposing or agree with you, or even if they don't agree, it allows them to see your reasoning so that they can value what you're saying and so that you bring your voice to the table and can back it up. So going to our next slide, a stance or claim is an author's position on an argument, um, on an issue. It's the main argument. Sometimes if you're writing an essay, maybe a research paper, that's also called a thesis statement. It's the big overall idea. Now your reasons are basically subclaims. They are um, examples of things that support that big claim. And I do have an example later on. Evidence is specific pieces of information that support those reasons. Some examples of details you might use as evidence. You might use quotes from, that might be a quote from someone who experienced something. It might be a quote from an expert. So if you are advertising toothpaste, for instance, and you want everyone to buy your brand of toothpaste, you might include a quote from someone who used that toothpaste and it, it changed their teeth. It made them sparkling white. That would be a quote. Data and statistics. Let's say, back to the toothpaste, you say nine out of 10 dentists recommend that. That is a statistic when we're using those numbers. Anecdotes kind of go with quotes, but it might be a story. Like I heard a story about this person who used this toothpaste and this is what happened. In examples, that's just kind of an additional, sometimes that might be a what if scenario, explaining a process, explaining like a report or study that had an example. Sometimes that's just summarizing some bigger ideas. Moving on. So I wanna talk about why claims, reasons, and evidence are important and when they're important. So if you've ever heard someone say, because I said so, you know how irritating that is. No one wants to be told that. Like, put your cell phone away. Why? Because I said so. I mean, if you've ever been told that, you probably rolled your eyes. If you've ever been told not to roll your eyes in class and then someone said, why? why? Because I said so, you probably rolled your eyes again. Um, <laughs> But because I said so really isn't a good reason. Because it's distracting, that's a better reason. Because you can't learn when you have your cell phone out, that's better as a reason. Because I feel offended when you roll your eyes, that's a reason. Those are all reasons. Now, the thing with reasons is that sometimes they depend on a person's personal perspective. Like, I feel offended when you roll my eyes, when you roll your eyes. That's still basically a claim. It's a reason, but it's, a, it's an opinion. So specific evidence is what backs up those reasons. Now, sometimes you can use anecdotes or stories. We have these little buckets. Sometimes you hear stories from different sources. Like, you might have a story about your life. 
You might have a story you heard from someone else. You might have a story from a book. You can use all of those as examples. Those are known as anecdotes. Um, a lot of times, for many arguments you might make, anecdotes are really fine. Let's say you're arguing that cats are better than dogs. You know what? Anecdotes or little stories from your own life and other people's life, you know what? That's perfectly good evidence in many cases. Um, a little more controversial, let's say you're arguing about religion. You know what? Anecdotes are really going to be fine evidence. I mean, you might have a personal story about how your beliefs helped you. In general, that's fine. Now when it comes, let's talk about statistics though. There are times when, you, when anecdotes are not enough. So to say, this one person said this, yeah, there are times when you need some hard data where you need to know that 60% of people want this, or you need to know that 50% of Americans um, have, have car insurance or something like that. Um, let's say you are going to war. So this is why I've got the hammer here. If it's a matter of policy or things like war or justice, you need some hard evidence. Um, so before going to war, you might want to know for a fact if the other country has nuclear weapons. You don't want to go to war saying, I think they have nuclear weapons, or my friend said they had nuclear weapons. You really want some hard data on that. <laughs> so that's why evidence is so important and why different types of evidence are appropriate to different different claims. If someone's making a claim about family being important, to them and the role of family in their own life, personal anecdotes are totally fine. If someone wants to make an argument about adoption and how family is important to children who might not have a family, you know what? If you're making a policy decision, you're probably going to need some statistics, not just personal stories. So let's go to some examples. We see claims and to some extent, reasons and evidence all the time in advertising. Here's a Gatorade advertisement. It basically up here has reasons and a claim all in one. I would say that the overall claim is water has no game. Water, Gatorade is better than water. Here are the reasons. Water doesn't have carbs and water doesn't have electrolytes. Now these are all kind of implied. If these advertisers wanted to go further, like if they were writing a whole essay on it, they would need to have some specific reasons to back up what they're saying here. I'm sure they could find them though. What are some statistics on electrolytes and carbs and Gatorade? I bet you could find that. What percent of the needed electrolytes are in Gatorade? What percent, like how many carbs are in Gatorade? And then they would need some explanation. How do electrolytes and carbs help improve athletes' performance? I bet they could do this. Down here in the ad, if you can see it, it kind of implies it. It says a scientifically proven blend of carbs and electrolytes that fuels muscles to go longer. Now, honestly, they should explain it more, but it's an advertisement. It's really this big claim that gets us, and if we wanted to do more research, we could probably find that. Another example of an advertisement, this is a much older ad. This is from probably more than 10 years ago, but it's a pretty good example. These old got milk ads. So the implied, the implied claim is you should drink more milk. And it's stated right down here, drink three glasses of low fat or fat free milk a day. That's the overall claim or point. And we basically have implied reasons. The author of the creators of this ad didn't come right out and write an essay because that's not how ads work, but they do have some reasoning. Milk is healthy. And they actually have some vague evidence right here. Studies suggest that tens who, teens who choose milk tend to be leaner. The protein helps build muscles. Basically, we've got two pieces of evidence that are really vague, but they do support that claim that milk is healthy. It's also implied that milk will help you succeed because you'll have more muscle and you'll be leaner. And also 
Taylor Swift drinks milk. And that's basically a reason in here. I want to go back to that because I said so real fast. Sometimes because I said so is actually used and that's called an appeal to authority. That's why a lot of times you might hear parents say it or teachers say it. But if a five-year-old says it, it's probably not gonna fly. Now, if you're a teenager, <laughs> a teacher or parent saying it probably doesn't really convince you that it's right. But here's the thing. A lot of times if a celebrity says it or a politician that you like says it, you might believe it. So that's why we get got milk advertisements with a celebrity. That's why we get athletes on the Wheaties box because the idea is that the idea is that that's an appeal to authority. This person likes it, therefore it must be good. I'm not sure that's the best type of argument, but just be aware that that is used in advertising. So here's an example all mapped out of using a claim, then reasons and evidence. So let's say my argument is cats make just as good companions as dogs do. So I've got some reasons. Cats do bond with their owners and cats are known to help humans. Now I actually looked up and found some specific examples of this. I found a recent study that talked about how cats do display signs of attachment with their owners. Sometimes it's secure attachment, sometimes it's insecure. But both of those are types of attachment, just like human children have different types of attachment with their parents. And that included a specific quote from this, the author of the study, about how cats are attached to their owners. There's a thing about quotes. If I'm quoting an expert, it's kind of an appeal to authority, but it's less saying this person as a scientist believe them and more, you know, giving the specific claim that they're making, not just saying believe them because of their job. It's more believe them because this is their research and the process they went through. Now, when it comes to the part about um, cats helping humans, I am using anecdotes. Because again, this is an example where, I mean, I'm talking about cats and dogs. It doesn't matter a ton if I have hard data. So I found some stories about a cat who helped a couple wake up to save them from a house on fire and a story really interesting about in the 1960s, two Siamese cats were in an embassy in Russia and they clawed at the wall and, <laughs> because they were hearing sounds. And it turns out they discovered hidden microphones because the embassy was being spied on because it was the Cold War. So that's just a kind of fun story. So those are examples of why claims, reasons, and evidence are important and of how to use those to strengthen your argument. Because when you have reasons and when you have evidence, you're showing that your argument matters. It's not just a random opinion. It's something you can back up and that gives your ideas a lot more weight. And it's a lot more likely that people are going to listen to what you have to say.